what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Week four is when I'm going to start to almost daily sign on CFBstats.com, what I think is the single best stat website you in the it. world. Yep. It, it, it's and, and it's one of those things where, although maybe technically this is an opinion, to me it feels like a fact. Like it's not even close. You can do national conference. You can do against FBS, against ranked. It's like so incredibly easy to navigate. Anyway, so week four, I feel comfortable diving in there because like we said, we have pretty good sample size. Both these teams played three pretty good teams and one opponent that was far below their level. Okay, well, let's see what has gone on thus far. Uh We'll go through offense, defense, and see if anything else jumps on the page. So offensively, the highest scoring offense in the SEC, your LSU Tigers, 42.8 points per game. But, yeah, you know, they, they suck, right? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, Ole Miss, second in the conference at 42 points per game. Um, when it comes to total yardage, once again, your LSU Tigers, First in the SEC at 530 yards a game. Ole Miss third at 470 per. Rushing offense. I mean, does it even feel like LSU's run the ball that well this year? It feels like they hadn't run it very often. That's what I'm saying, right? But like, and they and they've really picked up. I mean, you look at the last couple of games. Yes, the stats yeah. have been nicer, but yes. LSU third in rush offense in the league, averaging 191 per game. Yeah. Ole Miss, uh, this is what's shocking. They're, they've been first on this list the last few years under Lane. Uh, they're all the way down at number 10 here. They're yeah. sub-150. Yeah, Jackson Dart being their leading rusher right now. Um, passing offense. Shout out Spencer Rattler. South Carolina, first overall, 340 yards per game. LSU. Uh, real quick on Spencer yeah. Rattler. I mean, everybody watched that documentary when he was coming out. And he's like, who is this guy? This guy is just a bad Whatever he had to go through to get to the point where he's at now, yeah. like we need to highlight his growth and yes. his maturity because he was a turd and a half back then. And now, I mean, you see somebody who is taking shots, mm -hmm. basically every drop back, yep. not blaming anybody, staying tall in the pocket, delivering the football. I mean, he has come he's full like, circle. He's like 80% of his passes. And taking insane. hits almost every single time. Um, and, I mean, you know, to be fair, with, with a bit of aged perspective, uh, Yes. Who among us wouldn't come off as a huge a-hole if you were filmed at 18 years old? Like, maybe I wouldn't have been as a-hole in the same way he would have been, but I would have been. Like, I was an a-hole. Every 18-year-old is. I hate them. They're the scum of the earth. I see them every day walking around on LSU's campus. I just want to slap them all upside the head and tell them to get a job. Do something. <laughs> and they're trying bums. They're trying to get a job. All they're doing is just playing beer die and, and chasing skirts, Okay. Go work with your hands. Go quarry some rock or something. Right? Yeah. Get, get a little callous. Yeah, get a little callous. Let me see them hands, boy. Look pretty soft. My hands are callous from typing. Okay? All day, every day. <laughs> Real work. Um, so South Carolina is actually first. LSU, once again, I, I, I just can't imagine that we have reached a point where LSU is going to rank first in every single statistical offensive category. Yeah. And people just complain constantly about the offense every day. Joe Burrow, as I said, Joe, Joe, Joe Burrow broke all of your minds. Let's go back. Imagine the year. It's 2016, <laughs> Baton Rouge. And when, you know, you had Danny Etling playing quarterback. And look, I like Danny Etling. I thought he was a, a, actually a pretty good college football player. Or if you want to go back even farther than that, when you had Anthony Jennings playing quarterback. Like, remember those feelings? Remember those feelings. Okay, so LSU right now, like T-Bob's laying out, has an advantage offensively on almost every opponent that yes. they play. Yes. And it, it might not be perfect. No offense is going to be perfect. 2019 was as close as you'll ever get to a perfect offense, but you have to remember what that team was and who they had out there. Yeah, and it's one of those deals where, like, it's it's the whole reason why I think you have a a very good chance to beat Alabama is because you're the only one that can handle that front seven. Don't laugh at Daniel Basham's comment. <laughs> is it T-Bob's real reason oh. asking to check 18-year-old hands to see if they're bigger than this? <laughs> you know me too well. Okay, relax. This point. Relax. Uh. <laughs> um, so I'll choose second. Ole Miss fourth in the conference, averaging 323 
through the air game. Let's flip it defensively. And, well, this is where neither LSU nor Ole Miss score very high. Ole Miss eighth in the conference, giving up 18 points again. LSU, though, uh, 11th, giving up 25 per. That must get better. Total defense. So this is the yardage. Uh, Ole Miss is 10th. LSU is 11th. Pass defense. Ole Miss is 8th. LSU is 9th. Rush defense. Ole Miss is 11th. LSU is 12th. So essentially, yeah. both these teams, the same defensively, um, and LSU, and kind of the same offensively, with LSU just being like a, a just a, 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 a bit of an elite touch above what Ole Miss is doing offensively right now. Uh, if, if you were to do a self-scout, right, let's flip it. You're Ole Miss. You're trying to prepare for LSU. I would try to establish the run game early if I'm Ole Miss for a couple of reasons. One, because mm -hmm. that's who you are. That's what you've recruited to. That's what you've built this roster around, and it is your DNA and identity. And it hasn't really gotten started yet. Okay, no. But also, I want to keep five and eight and everybody on that sideline as much as I possibly can. Yep. Yep. I, I yeah. don't want True. to have them come out there and be explosive because I think they have advantages on that side of the football. So if I'm Lane and I'm that offensive staff, I'm you know I, I realize it hasn't worked to the level it's worked in the past as far as running the football. Man, I am, even like if I feel like I'm hitting my head against a brick wall for a little bit, like three series to open the game, I'm going to see if I can get some things going because – they understand what advantages LSU has when they're on the field. So if I'm self-scouting, that's what you have to get done. And LSU has given up yards on the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's their worst metric, 12th in the SEC, yeah. um, giving up uh, over 130 per game. Uh, here is the dumbest stat that I found all day. What are uh, What's one of the most important statistics right behind, tur behind turnover margin in, in, in all of football? Third down percentage, right? Um, we've seen how, how it's really affected this LSU defense at times this year, and it's made things feel awful and horrible and really affected and, and led to close games and well, even a loss game against Florida State. Uh, what do y'all think, and, and I don't know, if y'all have already looked at the paper, then just tell me when I play this game, but what do you think LSU's converting right now on third down? On third down? Offensively? Yes, offensively. 40%. Okay. Uh, 59%. Okay. Uh, I'd say right at 50. So... 59 is a ridiculous guess. Like, that is really stupid, but it's 58. Okay. They are converting 58% of their third downs. I felt downs. good about 50. I was like, that's a that's high That's what number. I'm saying. Do you realize how ridiculous it is? I'm pretty sure they're like seven percentage points above the second place team there. It is unreal. They're second in the conference in red zone touchdown percentage. Another uber important stat. Do you finish off drives? And actually... The biggest gap statistically in this bunch are those two right there. LSU converts 58%. Ole Miss converts 35 Do not let them convert on third down. LSU is second in the conference, scoring in the red zone, scoring touchdowns 73% of the time. Ole Miss is 12th, scoring touchdowns just 57% of the time. This is already an LSU defense that has shown to be bend but don't break. Uh, red zone stands, that'll be critical this week. And then, obviously, getting off uh, the field on third down is going to be critical this week. Um, so, there it is. We got some more stuff we can maybe go through. But uh, I thought that third down numbers, those third down numbers were shocking, shocking, shocking. Yeah, that's, I mean, again, like when you throw 50% out there, that feels... Now, it's always the goal. Every offensive coordinator at the beginning of the year, beginning of the week, we got to be 50% on third down. It's like, yeah, coach, that's, that's really easily said. But if you get to 50%, any offensive coordinator in the country would be like, that was a win for us. And both teams are bad at allowing opponents to do it because yeah, LSU's, LSU's 12th, 44% yeah. given up, and Ole Miss is 10th, 42% given up. So still on the whole, a strength for this LSU team. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe. Ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.